Hello and welcome again to Living English. Today we'll look at reporting on something you did and we'll look at more of the little words called prepositions. But first, let's see sisters and brothers. In the last episode, Anne was at the market. She was buying food to cook at Sarah's house when she thought she saw her brother. We catch up with her at the market when she comes across somebody else she knows. Thank you for writing into you here. Where are you in such a hurry? Oh, nowhere. I, I thought I saw someone I know. Oh, where? Oh, it's okay. He's gone now. I must have made a mistake. You got time for a coffee? Yeah, okay. Yeah? How about here? Fine. So what are you doing at the market? I'm cooking at your house on Friday, remember? Of course, Friday. That'll be great. What about you? Do you come here often? <laughs> What's funny? <laughs> when someone says, do you come here often, it's what we call a pick-up line. You know, when someone's... I know what a pick-up line is. Oh, sorry. I come here every week to buy fruit. I like fresh fruit for work. What are we having for dinner? You'll find out on Friday. What's oh, tonight? Cappuccino? Yep. And a tea, please? Tea? No worries. Do you want me to take your shopping home? I could put it in the fridge for you. No, that's okay. I have a fridge in my room at the hotel. The person you saw, who did you think it was? Uh, it's a long story. Maybe I'll tell you later. On Friday? Maybe. Let's look first at how Steve and Anne meet and what they say to each other. I'm sorry. Yeah? Steve. Thanks for writing into you. Where are you in such a hurry? Oh, nowhere. I, I thought I saw someone I know. First, Steve says, fancy running into you. He is surprised at meeting Anne by chance. To run into someone means to meet them by chance, not by arrangement. Practice saying, Fancy running into you with Steve. Fancy running into you? Steve asks her a question. He says, Where are you off to in such a hurry? Where are you off to means the same as where are you going? Listen again to Anne's answer. Oh, nowhere. I, I thought I saw someone I know. We say, I thought to talk about ideas we have that might change or that we're not sure about. Anne says that she thought she saw someone she knows, but she isn't sure. Practice saying, I thought I saw someone I know with Anne. Oh, nowhere. Oh, nowhere. I, I thought I saw someone I know. Notice that this has two past tense verbs. I thought and I saw because both the thinking and the seeing took place in the past. Let's practice saying I thought I with some other examples. Had my passport with me. I thought I had my passport with me. Phoned you yesterday. I thought I phoned you yesterday. Had plenty of time. I thought I had plenty of time. In all these examples, saying I thought really means that you now realize you were wrong. I thought can be used in another way. To tell someone else they are wrong. For example, I could say I thought I said don't be late. Try these examples. 
you had the keys. I thought you had the keys. He booked the hotel. I thought he booked the hotel. They said 10 o'clock. I thought they said 10 o'clock. Later, Anne admits to Steve that she thinks she was wrong. Listen to what she says. I must have made a mistake. Must have is short for must have. Practice saying, I must have made a mistake with Anne. I must have made a mistake. Another way of saying this is, I must have been mistaken. Say this after me. I must have been mistaken. And you can also just say, my mistake. Say this after me. My mistake. Steve asks Anne to have a coffee with him. Watch how he does this. Have you got time for coffee? Have you got is the same as saying, do you have? So, have you got time for a coffee means, do you have time for a coffee? Practice saying this with Steve. Have you got time for coffee? Steve is making a suggestion that they sit down and have a coffee. You could use this to make other suggestions too. Try saying, have you got time for these things? For a walk. Have you got time for a walk? To talk. Have you got time to talk? Look at another way Steve makes a suggestion. What about you? Bye. When Steve says, how about, here, he's making a suggestion. How about means, what do you think about? Or, is this okay? You can use how about to make any suggestion. It's fairly informal. Try these ones after me. How about going to the movies? How about a cup of coffee? So if you say, how about a cup of coffee to someone, it's the same as saying, let's have a cup of coffee. When Steve says, how about here, he means, let's sit here. And Anne agrees by saying, fine. Fine is the same as OK. Um, do you mind if I sit here? Oh, that's fine. Hello, Michelle. Hello, Brenton. Hello, everyone. Fancy seeing you here. Well, how are you? Well, all right, but uh, I need to go to the dentist tomorrow and I haven't got time. Oh, how come? Well, here's tomorrow on my diary. As you can see, it's fairly full. So where will you be at 10 o'clock? Um, at the hairdressers. I'll be there for two hours. Really? Where will you be at one o'clock? At the supermarket. I must get my shopping done. Where will you be at three o'clock? At the hospital. I must visit my aunt, who's very ill. You're right. You can't go to the dentist. I'm OK with that. Let's look at when we use at before names of places. First listen to Steve and Anne. So what are you doing at the market? I'm cooking at your house on Friday, remember? Steve asks Anne what she's doing at the market. And Anne reminds him she is going to cook dinner at his house. Why doesn't she say in the market and in the house? Sometimes you can use in, but we use at when we're talking about a place such as an address, a type of business, or a place outside. Say these ones after me. At home. At work. At the office. At school. At 23 Mitchell Street. At the bus stop. What about in? In can only refer to something which is enclosed. 
like a room? Yes. Or something which has an inside and an outside. So we always use in for cities or towns and countries. So we are in Australia. Yes, because we're not out of Australia. Repeat these after me. In Tokyo. In China. In the kitchen. In the water. In the supermarket. Before you said at the supermarket. At can mean inside or outside. In can only mean inside. We've already seen at used for times. At 10 o'clock. Now remember at and in are called prepositions. What other prepositions can we use to describe where something or somebody is? First, let's look at another part of today's story. Do you want me to take your shopping home? I could put it in the fridge for you. No, that's okay. I have a fridge in my room at the hotel. They both talked about putting the food in the fridge. Fridge is short for refrigerator, a place to keep food cold. Again, we use in to talk about an enclosed space that has an inside and an outside. Anne also says, in my room. Here's a box, Brenton, and an apple. You tell me where the apple is. It's in the box. Mm. Now, where is it? It's on the box. We could also say it's on top of the box. And where's the box? It's under the apple. Now, if I hold the apple here... It's above the box. Or we could say it's over the box. And where's the box? It's beneath the apple. Or we could say it's below the apple. So we use on and under when the apple and the box are touching. But when they're not, we use over or above and beneath or below. So I would say the plane is flying above the ground and worms are beneath the ground. Let's revise. You say where the apple is. In the box. On the box. Over the box or above the box. Now say where the box is. Under the apple. Beneath the apple or below the apple. There's two more to learn. What am I doing now, Brenton? You're putting the apple into the box. Into. We use into when talking about actions. Putting the apple into the box. Going into the house. Getting into the car. And what am I doing now? You're putting the apple onto the box. Onto is used for actions too. Well, we're out of time again. And we'll be back next episode when we'll be looking at describing objects and the phrase might have been. Mm -hmm.